Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lightbox. Well, welcome to uh, Disney Television Animation Presents Animation um, Amphibia Season 3 uh, Q&A with Matt Brawley. Um, my name is Kyle Boyd. I'm an artist manager um, here at uh, Disney Television Animation, and I'd like to introduce our panelists. Uh, first, we have Matt Brawley, our uh, creative creator and executive producer on Amphibia. Hey, guys. Um, previously um, storyboard artist and director on Gravity Falls, uh, director on Big City Green, storyboard artist Steven Universe, and a storyboard artist um, on Turbo. And we have um, Roxanne Cole, who is a uh, director on Amphibia. Welcome, Roxanne. Um, we also have uh, Joe Johnston, who's also a director on Amphibia, um, previously a storyboard artist on Fishhook, storyboard artist and co-EP or co-executive producer on Steven Universe, and co-director on Steven Universe the movie. So welcome, Joe. Hello. I'm here, here but you can't see me. <laughs> welcome, Joe. Great picture. Um, uh, also, we have Jessica Chandra, um, who is associate producer on Amphibia. So welcome, everyone. Thank you Hello. for joining us. Um, sort of to start us off, do each of you want to sort of tell us how you got into animation and maybe like why animation? Uh, I'll go first and I'll popcorn it to the next right, person, Thank if that you. sounds good. Um, I mean, I got into animation ever since in high school, uh, a guy from Pixar came, gave a talk. It was like one of those job fair kind of career career day things. Um, and he was so cool. He drew like Lumiere on the chalkboard and he was like, wow, you can get paid to do this. I couldn't believe it. I After that, I started taking figure drawing classes at the local community college. Uh, I went to CalArts for character animation. I spent all four years there. Um, and afterwards, I started working at DreamWorks, uh, got into storyboarding, which I love, I love it. Uh, and then eventually landed in TV. Um, and then, you know, started pitching shows, got a show off the ground. Here we are, bam! Uh, <laughs> but basically, you know, I love animation. I'm so happy to be here. And I can't wait to hear from everyone else. Uh, next up, uh, Jess Chandra, please. Hello. Um, I actually got into animation by accident. Uh, I was started off in live action and in college and my senior year, I was applying for internship at the Nickelodeon live action studio, but my resume accidentally ended, ended up in the animation side and they contacted me for an internship and I was like, animation, where? They're like, oh, our studio is in Burbank. I'm like, sure. But ever since then, I fell in love with it, love animation. I was at Nickelodeon for a bit and then came over at TVA for Tangled the Series and then on Amphibia Now. And I'm going to hand it over to Roxanne. Okay, I'll try to not stutter too much. Um, I got started in animation after I found out animation was a thing you could do in like 2013 after I came back from teaching English abroad. And then um, I started going to school for it and then I managed to land a job doing character design on Pickle and Peanut at Disney TV. And I started in character design and I thought I would stay in character design. And then a friend asked me if I'd be interested in doing storyboards. And I was like, sure, I'll do storyboards. And then it ended up working out. And then um, turns out storyboarding is a much better fit for me. And then I ultimately in the end, I think, I don't know how Matt, you found my work. I think I drew Sprig weird one time and then you reached out to me. And then um, uh, then ultimately ended up on Amphibia. You pass to Joe? Yeah. Joe. <laughs> um, so, my my path into animation is actually very similar to Matt's. We were roommates. We were roommates <laughs> in college. But before that, before that, way back in 2004, Matt and I both went to a program called the California Summer School for the Arts, which was a high school program. It's still going. Um, it's called InterSpark now. CISA mm. InterSpark, it's one of those. Um, and it's a high school statewide program um, for students to come and, and who excel at the arts and uh, really focus on a discipline. Um, and we both chose animation and we actually met there um, way back then. And then from there, it was a same sort of path 
life drawing and cal arts and working and then eventually Matt made his show and I got to join him. And before that, Joe actually put my work in front of uh, the Steven Universe crew. And that's the reason why I got to come and work on Steven for a little bit. So it's a, we're, we're kind of uh, tightly connected, Joe and I. Yes. Do you want to mention um, maybe some other alumni from CISA? Oh, Ooh, uh, is this a quiz? Uh, I was like, who, uh, who uh, uh, Alex Hirsch? Yeah. And, yeah. Jo Joe Pitt, for sure. Joe Pitt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Michael Herrera, actually. Um, uh, I do feel like this is a quiz. I'm Joe, putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, I was like, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Olivares. Lindsay yeah. Olivares, uh, art director of Mitchell's. Yeah. Mitchell's. Mm -hmm. um, she was in our year. Yeah, she was in our year, uh, and she made this awesome painted film about a goldfish. Do you remember that, Joe? It was like yeah. paint. Oh, yeah. Hand she was painted. amazing. Yeah, she was incredible. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, it's a great program. It's a little bit. <laughs> well, very cool. Do we want to, um, maybe you want to start off with the clip? Yeah, absolutely. So can you, you want to tell us a little bit about the clip too? Yes. Uh, so basically, you know, um, uh, because of this is Lightbox and in the spirit of Lightbox, I really wanted to show something a little industry focused, something that was a little work in progress, something that wasn't done. So what I have decided to share with you guys today is the animatic for our Marcy theme song takeover. Um, and, you know, it's really great. We're really happy with it. Uh, our Sasha theme song takeover was a big success and the team was chomping at the bit to do one for Marcy. Um, this was uh, uh, spearheaded by our, our, the head of multi-platform, Gino, uh, and it was written by Dan Siegel. It was boarded by the amazing Danny Ducker uh, the music was composed by TJ Hill, and the singing, of course, is by Haley Chu, the voice of Marcy. So please enjoy. Come on, Polly, it's theme song time. Uh, this follow my head every time. Wait, the heck is that thing? Hey, friends. Oof. Hi, Marcy. You gonna tell us why big floating words are in front of our house? Oh, yes. It's finally time for my theme song takeover. Aren't you curious what I was up to before we met? A theme song what Not now? especially. It'll make more sense in a second. Cue the music. Oh, wait. <laughs> I have the music. Boop. Woke up in Utopia, where I fell down a flight of stairs. Broke my leg, but luckily, the newts have free public health care. So then I became a loyal ranger, and I fought this creepy cult. Kept books out of danger, slaying a killer cobra with the cat of all. I lived on a warship, became a flipboard champion. Soon I was the king's trusted advisor. I studied salamander brains, drug bug appetizers, yum! And for fun, D and some campaigns. Okay, if you want to pick up the long sword, I need you to roll for a strength check because your character is like a little wood elf and uh... This will be fun eventually, guys! Trust me! I love the hidden amphibia So much adventure still to see Hope nothing bad ever happens to me Dang! You accomplished a lot in three months! Well, as the locals say, you can sleep when you burrow deep beneath the soil. Amen, sister. What? Anywho, I gotta head back to Nootopia. <laughs> Farewell, my friend! Bye, Marcy! See you later, alligator! Ah, alligator? Where? <laughs> Don't worry, it's just one of those silly human phrases. <laughs> ah, there actually is one! Oh, so good. Yay! Good job. What do you want to start off um, answering some questions from our audience? Let's do it. Cool. So, um... I have first one is Cassie. Um, what are some challenges in balancing the show's tone, especially after the season two finale? Uh, Joe, do you have any thoughts on this? I feel like, and Roxanne, you guys have done such an amazing job balancing tone and it's a tricky thing. Well, I think uh, on a show like this, um, it's so much fun when the show opens up. Uh, the first season, um, uh, you know, it's it's all it takes place mostly in Wartwood. And then season two is this big caravan trip all the way to Newtopia and, and meeting all these new characters. Um, and so it's it's really just the show evolving. 
um, into a, a new thing. And the tone just kind of marches along with you as you as you go. And the the writing team and the storyboard teams uh, on on our crew have been so wonderful and so amazing that we've all just been kind of been on this journey together. And it's been so easy uh, as far as for me. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Roxanne, any thoughts? I mean, I came on for season three. So like, um, so like my experience mostly has to do with how I got to watch the tone evolve from the beginning of season three to the end of season three, which it was a lot of fun to kind of like toe that line of when, when are we getting into plot? When are we getting into more episodic, just fun moments? And, um, and there's plenty of both. And I don't know, it just, th these characters are really easy to kind of like have both moments because they're really complex characters, even though they're really fun and they can be really goofy at times, they're still really complex. They have a lot of flaws. So you can really delve into the lightheartedness of who they are, as well as what makes them complicated and easy to relate to. I remember um, Roxanne, when you came on, you, you of course hadn't seen season two because it hadn't aired. And I remember you were like, cool, cool, I'll catch up, I'll catch up. And then you were in the <laughs> chat being like, uh, Anne turns blue, I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? It was such like a big jump, um, but it was so fun to see you as an outsider come in and like watch all the animatics and, and learn all that stuff in real time. Um, I remember watching one of the anim like when one of the new episodes that was boarded and I was just like what happened like I've only <laughs> yeah. saw season one and I was like what's happened since season one because at that point season two hadn't really at least none of the like the heavier parts of season two hadn't come out yet so like I had no idea where, where I was heading I was like oh yeah we're gonna have more frogs in frogland and um having fun frog times and then no <laughs> that's not what happened so. Yeah. Hey, um, also Jess. So Jess, can you tell us actually a little bit like about what you do? Because I was going to ask you, like, from a production point of view, what was it like to see the, the show's tone shift? Oh, Matt doesn't know what I do now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's for, it's for everybody um, else. Yeah. I think it was interesting because like you said, it, it has gotten a lot more complex in season two. We travel to all new cities, every show, every episode. So we have to bolster our design team. And, you know, we added more in the schedule to accomplish Matt's vision. And it was challenging at times, but everybody got so excited because they knew we're, we're ultimately, we're gonna make something really good. So this struggle was all worth it. But yeah, definitely adjustment needed to be made. <laughs> we have another um, question from the audience, um, from Joshua. Um, for our directors as well. Um, favorite episode you've directed? And more specifically, what was your favorite scene to direct? If there's something you can share from season three. Very yeah. specific. Very or specific season two. Season. Season or season, season, season three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Season yeah. Two. I guess, Roxanne, if you're going to mention a season three, just be general. Very, yeah. Very vague. <laughs> uh, go for it. Uh, Joe, Roxanne, anyone? I'm um, mean. Okay, go ahead, Joe. <laughs> uh one of my favorite episodes from season two um is bessie and michelangelo um it was such a fun sweet little episode and danny ducker and um eddie did such an amazing job um boarding that episode and the drawings were just so funny it was so so funny to just watch um that episode come together um I like those like sweet little contained episodes uh, the most, I think. Very cool. Do you hear the meep in your sleep still, Joe? Meep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I have another question. That's a good one from Pablo. I'm interested in how Amphibia explores loss. Um, we, see, um, we see the thought of loss uh, Sprig makes Anne uh, react at the end of season two. I'm giving things away if no one's seen season two. Um, I am excited to see um, how Anne feels after losing Marcy, and I wonder how she will change. Will there be any exploration of that in season three? So, little, little spoilers. <laughs> yeah. So broadly, I would say just that, like you know, loss is is one of the many feelings that is part of this cocktail called life, and that like you know it shows up in the show because it is part of your life, and it will be something that everybody deals with. 
So these these bad things or these intense things that the characters go through, you know what I mean? Like that's just us trying to create believable characters and believable scenarios. You know what I mean? Like there's there's a running theme in Amphibia of kind of like, you know, the price is paid or, you know, every dream costs something. And I think that with a through line like that, like it does, it is going to get a little heavy at times. And for me, I think that kids, you know, and I know we all feel this way, like they're really smart and they they love to see these things explored because like, you know, it's not just all rainbows and sunshine and, and bubble gum, but you want you want the full spectrum of the human experience, you know what I mean, in, in the show. Very cool. Anyone else? Um, Jeff, you want to any thoughts? Um, no, yeah, I agree. I love that. Even though, even when I watch the storyboards and read the script, I was like, but why, Matt, why? <laughs> but it is definitely... You know why. It's, you know... Yeah, I was like, Matt, no. <laughs> Matt, <it."> no. <laughs> <laughs> but like what Matt says, it is, it's part of it. It's part of life. And I think it's going to be interesting to see in this coming season how this is going to affect all the characters and how they deal with it i think to uh being 13 is a tumultuous age mm -hmm. and it's all about change when you're that age change and and loss can come with that and uh a big, big part of this show is sort of exploring how friendships change at this age and that's cool. that's a big part of it cool roxanne you have anything to add to that I'm trying to be real careful because I know this is more about season three than anything else. So like, um, but I've already forgotten the question. So uh, discussing loss in the show. Um, I mean, I guess like, I mean, I guess the way I interpreted it a lot more is like, is that it is about, there's a lot about loss in this show, but it's also largely about change and like mm. so like what comes with that because like you know they're all changing they're evolving as characters evolving like they're growing up you know so like even Anne from season one to season two she's become a completely different character um and you know and it's only gonna they're gonna change even more in season three so cool yeah thank you i um, have another qu uh, question from alexis um for all of you um, what do you love most about your role on the show? Uh, I'll start. I, I really love, um, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before, and when you're in a kind of manager role, it's less about like what I can do and sort of what I can inspire others to do. So there's nothing more um, satisfying to me than seeing everybody step up to the plate and do their best work, you know, because they're motivated um, and, you know, because we have a rapport. Um, and so that's extremely satisfying for me. Uh, Jess? Uh, yeah, same. I think my favorite part is the people. Being in production, you actually get to deal with literally everyone from the writers to the board artists to the designers, the editor, the post team. You really see throughout rather than, you know, sometimes when you're just the designers, maybe you're close with the design team or the storyboard with the storyboard. But in production, we literally touch every step of the way. And it's very exciting to see how an episode progressed from a piece of paper that you read. And then a few months later, oh, now it's animated color. It still gets me every time. <laughs> so I think that's my favorite part, the people. You rock uh, Roxanne, yeah. Um, I think like for me, like, I mean, this is my first time directing was on this show. And I think like what I, what I, found that I really enjoyed doing was um, well working with everyone like I, you work with a lot more people when you get into a supervisory role you end up you talk to a lot more people like I'm more I was way more in contact with production than I'd ever been just in my previous roles which I really enjoyed and um, I just like seeing everything kind of come together and like all the parts of the process seeing where it starts and where it ends and just how big of a difference that makes Cool, Joe. To piggyback on what Jess said, uh, for me too, it's it's been about the people I've been able to meet and get to know and work with uh, these past years, and especially the last year and a half. Um, we were really lucky as a crew uh, to be so tight knit um, before lockdown happened, and we all went home um, because that that uh, that camaraderie and and that love uh, between everybody. Um, 
has really continued, uh, even though we are all apart. Um, and it's also made it so that people who are new to the crew, um, uh, like Roxanne and, and like a bunch of people, uh, it's, it's made it, uh, I think, a warm place for them to join as well, to join us. Um, so it's, it's, it's been really, it's, it's been really, really nice. It's been really, really nice. Hey, Ro Roxanne, since it's your first time directing, what did you think? I did mean, you... I felt really lucky that this was my first time directing was on this show um, because it was, it, you know, it was such a well-oiled machine. Like it was so, it was, it, it was like, I couldn't have asked for a better first time experience doing any kind of job. That's very so. nice of you. You did, you, you killed it, crushed it. Roxanne's Tomorrow fantastic. Tomorrow Roxanne is going to quit animation entirely. <laughs> no, no, no. No more. <laughs> very good. Another question from CD. Um, it's kind of a fun one. Um, how do you decide what scenes need more budget or work or action as opposed to others? How do you, how do you balance action and comedy? Uh, Joe and Roxanne, this is a great question for you guys because like, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's a lot of your day-to-day -day when you get the script. Mm -hmm. We're talking like actual budget, how we allocate. No, but I think, I think you know, <laughs> in, in, terms of, in terms of where you put your resources, resources being people, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it's, um, you, can, you can tell in the script um, when we get the script uh, what scenes are going to be big scenes. Um, there is a there was an infamous line in the script for um, True Colors uh, that I think went fighting, fighting, fighting. They are all fighting. <laughs> and that was like, oh, I, I looked at that, saw that in the script. I'm like, oh, that's a big that's a big thing. Uh, we're going to need some 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 top people on that. Um, so you can plan ahead and you can uh, kind of see it coming. And um, and you can kind of just, you know, roll with the punches. Uh, so for like, for that scene, I think uh, Jen Strickland ended up uh, storyboarding. That's, and that was the scene of everybody fighting in the throne room against all the robots um, before Anne turns blue. Do you, um, my question, do you, for your board artists, you cast them in the certain roles in their episodes? Like if someone's really good at comedy, someone's good at like, musical sequences or, you know, action. You try to, yeah, um, but you also want to make sure that uh, your team, your teammates are doing uh, scenes or writing or drawing characters that they love to write and draw. Um, so uh, oftentimes I would be picking out sections that I knew that the storyboard artist would be able to really bring their own sort of take to it and um, their own heart to it. Um, and then also, yeah, if it's if it's a big action scene and, and if someone did the action scene in the previous episode, yeah, maybe they want to take a break on the next episode and not do the action scene. <laughs> yeah. uh, Roxanne, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, he said pretty much everything I probably would have said. Um, but yeah, like, you know, we try our best to cast. Sometimes you can't because you got two board artists on an episode. So like that's they get half the episode each and that's it's not as there's not as enough borders to cast like super accurately to like oh yeah this guy's real good at like these emotional scenes but maybe there's only maybe there's maybe the whole episode's emotional so then you got to cast both of them as both board artists as the emotional board artist or sometimes this episode could be entirely action um and that's always a lot of fun um it's a lot of it's a lot of work to do a lot of action but it is also really fun um but yeah and sometimes I, you guys the directors will take some pages like i've seen you both do that is it do you have a process when you take the pages yourself uh i'll take i'll take sections so there's there there were a few episodes that i didn't take a section and those were ones where i was like if i took a section it might ruin the flow for the board artists because sometimes there's like a really nice flow like usually that tends to be episodes that are that aren't as like episodic so like they they're not like mo they're not primarily just gags they tend to be a little bit more plot based those ones are can be a little bit tougher to take a section but mm. usually i take a section especially on the heavy episodes where i'm like okay like either everyone's really burned out because you know working from home is tough for a lot of people 
And so I'll take a section that maybe give some give the board artist a little bit of a break on one of the more challenging parts or maybe one of the parts that nobody's excited to do. <laughs> and so I'll be like, I'll do it. And That's good of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of questions about like inspiration and like what inspires you in certain episodes or the series in general, like you maybe you want to talk about some of the inspirations for some of the episodes or writing or just the series in general? Yeah, I think that, you know, we all like have different inspir inspirations. And like, I, I think it'd be fun to like hear, like, you know, for me, obviously I love Studio Ghibli films and Legend of Zelda and stuff, but I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys about like, you know, what, what are your kind of creative like night lights, you know what I mean? Like, what do you always look to when you're like, oh, that's the kind of content I want to make? Like, Jess, you you included. Yeah. Um, I think for me, Matt probably knows this. I honestly love a lot of things. <laughs> we always talk about movies that came out and I'm like, I love it. <laughs> and then he's like, no, I hate that movie. <laughs> like, oh, really? Yeah, you're um, like a huge like Jurassic Park fan, right? And Star Wars. I am or... a huge Jurassic yeah. Park fan. Yes, and Star Wars. And honestly, I I can't do horrors, but I love a lot of like magical um, worlds. So that's why Amphibia is very special because it takes you away, and then you meet all these characters and their way of living, which makes sense. But it's in the frog world, and that's what I love about it. So I love those kind of like fantasy world. How, How about you guys? guys? How about Roxanne yeah. and Joe? And I guess like spe specifically for like, I think one thing that's a struggle, especially now during lockdown is, is uh, inspiration uh, when you're stuck at home. Um, and honestly, uh, it's been seeing uh, the crew's work, like whenever like we have a pitch or the boards come back or, or when an episode comes back, um, it's, it's really inspiring to look at and to see everyone's hard work. Uh, it's it it it's been rough being away from uh, the the servers and not being able to spy <laughs> on everyone's work yeah. that's getting turned in because um, I always love I used I used to really love staring at the design. Uh, yeah, we used to like pin designs up and like yeah. share them more, and that's something in quarantine that's been just very hard to do. And like even I myself, I sort of forgot that that's how you guys that's where you get energy. So like you know, I think a little bit in quarantine, I compartmentalized too many parts of the process. And when you guys expressed like, oh, we want to join each other's rough pitches again. I was like, oh yeah, of course you do. Like you want to get inspired by the work of your peers. And so it's like, yeah, it's incredibly important uh, for what we do. Um, my question, um, you know, as artists, you know, growing up, you you know your hobby essentially is drawing or storytelling or just art you know essentially your hobby at a certain point in your career you know your hobby becomes your career yeah do you do you do anything on the side that is very different from your day-to-day -day? are you or asking you us if we draw for fun anymore well i mean like well that and because like, <laughs> some people don't i mean some people you know try and do something even like andreas deja or learn from milk call to do wire sculptures like it's oh. so creative but like it's very different, you know. So like, what are your what are your wire sculptures, Is guys? Roxanne. Well, Roxanne. during work from home, I've done a whole lot less than I used to when I was going into the <laughs> office, um, because you're just home all the time, and you're like, okay, <laughs> work is my house, um, so it's kind of hard to separate the two things sometimes. But um, you know, I don't, I don't actually like. Growing up, I didn't, I did draw a lot and, um, but like all of my hobbies had to do with art. I was always like either drawing or I was writing stuff or reading books too. So like, I'm pretty boring as far as my hobbies go. They're pretty standard. Um, <laughs> like, um, and most of the stuff that I like doing that I used to do that before pre COVID was like traveling. I like traveling, going to like hiking and stuff. Cause that's where oh, I would yeah. draw inspiration from. Like, I think, um, that's probably been one of the harder things lately is like um, having to find places closer by that can that gave me that same like separation from like my daily life. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, really hard. Yeah. 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 So because like I remember I went to New Zealand and went for a week or two, like it was, I guess now it would be like two and a half years ago. 
I was gonna say like when and that was that? like really energizing yeah. yeah so we need that though we need like new experiences to inform like our stories and our you know what I mean like yeah it's important yeah yeah, yeah. it's just I mean, seeing new places and like even if even if it's just like somewhere in the area too I'm just not very good at finding places to go see here for some reason I'm like how do you find something fun to do in in your city like, yeah I, downtown Burbank yeah. So there you go. Hopping place. <laughs> the mall, go to a movie. <laughs> yeah. Joe, how round about you? One. What are your hobbies? Oh, yeah, round one just opened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Recently, uh, I, I've been doing some like miniature building. Ooh. Um, so I've been doing some like Aww. little fantasy. Ha- I got inspired by some some YouTube watching recently. Like Warhammer? Or you mean like, no, little, no, no. like little, little fantasy castle houses Ooh. things? Um, like not, not like little train sets though or something. No, not right? quite. Not there yet. I don't have I don't have any space for it. Like, it's gotta be small. <laughs> and there's no, not, there's no space for anything big. Not to pick your brain a little bit, but do you like making little stuff because you're like looking over it and you're like, I'm a god, or like what what is it about like <laughs> the miniatures that no I've always been very crafty. Like I, I did mm, a lot of like true. origami when I was a kid. Um and like I used to build things out of paper a lot. Um and so like I always kind of come back to that sometimes. Uh it's kind of like that Lego connects sort of oh yeah itch, itch in your brain and so but this one involves like painting also so it, it it's a little artistic on the same that's so cool i mean steve wolfhard our he was our our post director and he was a um he was into miniatures and he'd like he'd like airbrush like the tiniest little mailbox he, he showed you that stuff right uh-huh. yeah i've seen some of it yeah it was just like that is a tiny mailbox yeah <laughs> um Jessica, i would have, have to any? say like from my perspective since I don't draw. I used to watch cartoon as like, oh, this is such a fun, lighthearted, enjoyable animation. And then once we started working in the in the industry, now when I watch TV animated, I think about, oh my God, that episode must cost a lot of money. Or like <laughs> that episode sounds like it's gonna be a pain to break down, or who's the credit? Who's in the credit? Who bought it? <laughs> <laughs> so you're like looking at it very differently for sure. <laughs> Yeah. it's true it's true like yeah. animated stuff from like i have the same feeling jess where i'm like time to watch luca and then it's like oh no it's like work you know what i mean yeah. I'm just oh, like, the hair <laughs> animation's great yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we definitely pick things apart um now well, what about you matt uh no hobbies no hobbies, no hobbies. Kyle. not not no a one stuff. and it's so funny because well like video games sure and like you know that's good that's yeah fun. yeah but like honestly like and it's so funny because i get asked this a lot like you do anything on the side and i'm like oh, what like what? on the side like what do you what mean is, yeah, like when that? yeah like what are you talking about um but like you know again it's a tricky thing because like when you're when your vocation uh when you when your hobby becomes your job um you know you, you gotta you gotta kind of remind yourself why you why you love it so much and and like you know it's one of those things I would love to fall in love with drawing again because I remember when I was a kid I would just draw dragons and dragon ball z characters and robots and I would just like oh my god I just I love the simple mechanical action of making the strokes and, and creating the drawings and now you know you've got that you got that little gremlin on your shoulder that's like is this even good enough you know when you're drawing it like you know what I mean do I even post this and like I would love to get to a place where like that doesn't matter to me so much but like I will say that like I've never been the kind of person who keeps like a sketchbook I'm not Guillermo del Toro you know what I mean like I'd love to be that kind of person but I'm not I, I draw best when I know it's free and it's easy and it's like nobody's judging it like on a napkin or something you know what I mean do you have you always been like a non not a, a thing but like sketchbook person non yeah absolutely like I tried really? to be like I even carried one around and it was like empty you know what I mean just to like look yeah. like I was I was one of the <laughs> you know what I mean um, you're an but, artist yeah but really I did I did my best work when I it wasn't like that you know yeah cool um just uh just do you want to kind of talk about we keep getting a couple questions about like sort of length of time like so you want to kind of meaning t- how long it takes to do some episodes and board them and whatnot you want to talk about sort of like the schedule and kind of dig into that a little bit sure it, um yeah. mm-hmm. I guess every show is slightly different uh for mm-hmm. us we're an 11 minutes per episode kind of uh structure so for our board team they have four weeks to board an 11 minutes and it's ideally not actually mm-hmm. not nowhere near enough you know it could have been it never double is. the time yeah, it never it's never is. enough never is. Um, but somehow these guys always pull it off and did amazing job I, I'm still excited to go to any board pitches every episode uh, for designs we also have four weeks so we have like two weeks for black and white and then we have two weeks for color 
again, nowhere near enough. It's never enough. <laughs> There's always more to do. But um, these guys are great. We also have about two weeks of editorial time for the directors and the editor. Um, we also have writing in the beginning of it, which is, I would say, uh, what is it, Matt? Like four weeks total? Or? I, I feel like writing, yeah, it's tricky. I think I think writing is like five or six weeks, dude. Like, I think it's, mm. I thought it was, I think it was stacked. Like from the very beginning, mm -hmm. right? Until yeah, the, from like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 But I think, yeah, like the, the big question everyone wants to know is like, how long does it take to animate? Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, when we send so, it. So, right, well, after wanna... we send in, yeah, we don't animate in-house, so we do ship our animation over to Korea, and they have a 18 weeks per 11 minutes. So it will go out in the ethernet for 18 weeks uh, and then come back to us after that. And it's like first all animated in color, which is great. But for uh, in general, just our entire season take about a year to produce. Yeah, it's, so, and, and it's a long time. We produce them mm -hmm. sort of like, and every show is different, but we produce yeah. them sort of stacked a little bit so that like, mm -hmm. again, you're not experiencing, you know, a year gap between airing. Well, sometimes you do, but like we're, we're doing them sort of overlapping a little bit the seasons, you know? Yeah. And yeah. do you do your episodes in order, like a production? Yeah, we do. I mean, you know, season one- For the one, most part, yeah. Season uh, one- Of episode, I mean? Yeah, yeah we, we do. Occasionally we have like a, 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 a you know, uh, something goes wrong and an episode needs to get rearranged. And, yeah, we do switch Special things occasionally. Holiday episodes, yeah. yeah, holiday episode because like of when it needs to air and deliver and stuff. So sometimes it does like get a little messed up, but generally we're doing it in chronological order. That's, that's mm -hmm. great. Some shows do, some shows don't. Yeah, it's, it depends. Every show is so different. And that's the crazy thing. Jess will tell you, every production is different. Mm -hmm. Every single time it is somewhat different, whether they they use a studio in South Korea, whether or not it's an asset based show, you know, like either it's hand drawn on paper, like our show, or it's asset based, like something like Hilda, like, you know what I mean? Like Mercury or, mm -hmm. or whether it's a script driven show or a board driven show, it's really, there's so many different combinations that you can do that every show is different. Um, I have a, a good question from Joshua. Um, out of all the roles, um, which role do you think um, goes underappreciated or doesn't get enough attention? Amazing question. Everyone, I hope everyone has a different answer. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe Roxanne, you want to start? Yeah, hit it. That's a good question. I, yeah. Um, I mean, I think like, as far as like out, outside of the show, like production seems to get like glossed over a lot, like how important True. production is True. in making a show, um, just because like their work doesn't necessarily translate immediately onto the screen. Like, I mean, you don't see like their drawings on the screen or anything like that, but like a show wouldn't get made without production staff. And like, as a director, you know, even, even more how important production is to just get the job done. Um, like we all like the artists. Oh, we have terrible time management. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows the artists. Yeah, so like, like we're all over the place. And if it weren't for production, there would be just no show. <laughs> sure. How about you, Joe? What do you What do you think? I I mean I have nothing to add to that. That's <laughs> I mean I it's exactly the truth. And that's what I was gonna say. Um, it's especially the last year and a half. Uh, we would be nowhere. Yeah. Um, without the amazing production staff that we have. Yeah. Jess, Good. you're on production. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I He's mean, like, yeah. I would say in most cases, yes. Uh, the production team sometimes is very underappreciated because there's no physical result of what right. we do. But I'm very grateful on this show. I, everyone's actually very appreciative of us. You know, our PAs are the bone of the the whole show they stay late at on friday night shipping an episode until especially work from home with the internet struggle it's like two hours of just uploading something and they stayed up you know so without them it doesn't happen and but on this show yeah we we're actually very appreciated and i'm very lucky we're very lucky even at some point the design team where it was basically the whole crew put together like a thank you card and a drawing of a production team on the couch sweet. singing karaoke with Matt. It was very <laughs> it was the sweetest sweet. thing ever. So it was the um, yeah, everyone's thing. great. Um, and our art directors always very appreciative of us. They're very kind to work with. So 
I don't know on our show specifically. I would say production team maybe usually, but I'm pretty grateful on this show. We're we're seen. Yeah, I think just to just to add on, like in terms of you know generally, it feels like the two positions I always see kind of overlooked is the the revisionists, the conform revisionists, especially are the ones who are really you know, you've got these amazing board artists, but there's only so much they can do. And so it's really this crack team of revisionists who are kind of like spackling everything, you know what I mean? And getting it ship ready. And they do so much work and it's often unrecognized, you know what I mean? So th those those teams are always just, they're really, really doing a lot of work. And then in the other position that is always kind of overlooked is color stylist, mm, um, totally. historically, yeah. historically underpaid uh, because it, it has a, a origins in ink and paint you know, Kyle, like that's, that's where mm -hmm. like, yeah, that all comes from. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the kind of position that once again, th that person is doing a lot of heavy lifting and their taste, uh, we're relying on them for, for a lot of, you know, the characters and, and how they look on the backgrounds and, and props, how those look on the backgrounds and effects, you know, laser blasts, fire that glows, mm -hmm. all of that, these stars in the background, you know what I mean? This kind of work, really is down to the color stylist. And that's a position I, I often don't see mentioned very, very much. Yeah, true. And you know, who else that I think not any, not a lot of people know, there's a position called the checker. Mm -hmm. And they're- The checker. Like, the, the caboose, as I call them. The end yeah. of the line, mm -hmm. at the no. very last, last line, and they catch everything. And not a lot of people is aware of that. Uh, you should, you should describe, well, because Roxanne and Joe, deal directly with the checker and like it is just the kinds of questions that like there was rain in the shot right before this do you want rain in this shot you know what i mean it's just it's a number <laughs> yeah. of questions mm -hmm. the checker and you've yeah. seen them actually credited sometimes as something called the continuity editor sometimes that's that's what they mm -hmm. opt to be to call them which is so funny because like i've seen people be like well the continuity editor didn't do their job very well because this story has continuity problems like actually that's not what they do they their continuity like almost continuity across the boards you know what i mean like rain effects you know what i mean do you want lights on lights off for these scenes like and and joe and roxanne had a very close relationship with our checker because she's always sending questions to them yeah it'll be like yeah, a like, drawing of a tiny toad in the background holding a basket and she'll be like do we design this tiny basket no one caught <laughs> oh what no what yeah yeah what or are you like, gonna say roxanne yeah oh, i was just gonna say like the like how swords come up a lot <laughs> and like you know because just because yep. it's like you know um in boards you sometimes forget to oh yeah draw the right number of props in every in every every scene and um you don't even notice it it's like becomes a blind spot for you like i didn't notice it and then the checker comes in and i get an email being like hey uh why aren't they holding this thing anymore? And I'm like, uh, wait, what? What thing? And then <laughs> yeah. I realize that they haven't been, they, the thing that we had them have at the very beginning of the episode, they haven't had it for like the majority of the episode. And now you have to draw it all in. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. those it takes kinds a village. of little things. It's like the, it's like the Starbucks cup, right? That, that in like Game of Thrones. Like oh yeah. Oh, make sure uh -huh, that yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we've had our own Starbucks cups, <laughs> yeah. haven't we? Okay, yeah. great. Um, let me see if I can get another question for you. Um, this is from Catherine. What is it like balancing episodic comedy and story arcs? Given that Amphibia is supposed to be a children's show, I imagine there's a lot of work when it comes to dealing with heavy topics, but it also um, makes sure it's approachable. Yes, that's an amazing question. I'll take this one. Basically, you know, this is an episodic show with uh, continuity layered underneath it. So at the end of the day, this was designed to be an episodic show, meaning that you can drop into any adventure, any episode and enjoy it. Um, obviously, as we've progressed season one, season two, season three, the amount of continuity has increased and you know, you're know you gonna be a little lost when you when you jump in, that's that's inevitable. Um, but you know, it's been very tricky and, and probably one of the biggest challenges from, from the writing point of view is just, you know, we want self-contained stories, right? But we want to be respectful too of the long form story. And it's tricky, you know what I mean? Like sometimes we do it great. Sometimes we probably could have done it better. And I've learned so much kind of doing it. Um, I think it's not the kind of thing I would probably attempt again, if I'm being completely honest, I think. But mm -hmm. I was emboldened, honestly, by Steven Universe. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. The idea, Stephen struck such a wonderful balance of episodic comedy 
and mm -hmm. also having overall lore that I felt really built and built and built over seasons and over over episodes to a, to a fever pitch. And I thought they did a wonderful job with that momentum. And I'm I'm hopeful that we can do the same. Very good. Um, is there for all of you? Is there a story that you haven't told yet that you've always wanted to tell? I mean, in, in, in just what? in general, like meaning like, is there a theme or like some sort of story point or an emotion or something? That is a that great always, question. Like, always like to tell? almost like, like topics that we felt like we haven't really gotten into. Well, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I don't really know. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. it's kind of, I'm a big loaded question. Though. Yeah. I mean, for sure. There's always stuff. There will always be things, you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like, you know, uh, in terms of the, the, heavier topics. I've, I've always wanted to tell a story about, you know, someone who was kind of stuck in the hospital. Cause like when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I, I spent a lot of time there and I was kind of stuck. And like, I, that's, that's, that's the kind of story that's been rolling around in my head for a long time. But like, obviously that's not like the most, you know, commercial or <laughs> kid friendly, but like, that's the kind of thing that I'm like, oh yeah, it'd be great to do that someday. I know Ro Roxanne, Joe, Jess, is there some story that you like, you've always sort of wanted, although this is kind of like, I'm like, I don't want to like, you know, hear about your, <laughs> like, I don't want to put your idea on We're display. We're not trying to cry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Here's you're, a story you're trying to tell, you're just giving it away. Somebody yeah, exactly. It. So I don't know. So, do, you guys, yeah, do, you guys any, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or do you want to? Is this a story for amphibia? I, I'm not sure. I think they just mean in general, like, you know, because it, oh, it's hard to answer that question about amphibia because they like, we yeah. haven't gotten all the seasons, all three seasons. You yet, haven't right? seen it all. Yeah. 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 So, you know yeah. what I would love to know about? I would love to see the story of Mrs. Boon Choi's um, childhood because oh. she, you know, you know what I mean? Okay. She That's fun. Come to America, grew up, as yeah. immigrant, and <laughs> yeah. raising a child in America from as a, you know, as an immigrant. So that would be an interesting one. <laughs> I love it? that. Great. <laughs> we keep getting some questions about pitching do you want to talk about pitching meaning storyboard pitches oh you yeah talk, we, maybe talk about your um process of pitching your boards and your team? yeah uh um i love pitching i i think it is one of the best parts about being a board artist but everyone has different feelings about it I, I, some people they they don't love you know like doing funny voices and kind of getting in front of everyone and putting your putting your clown nose on you know what i mean so like i don't yeah. know but i i personally really like it i've always really loved it i think that there's nothing better than than feeling the energy in the room when you're pitching a good board. I don't know, Roxanne, uh, Joe, what do you guys think? Roxanne, maybe you want to talk about pitching boards? Um, well, pitching is not my favorite thing oh. as far as pitching a storyboard goes, because like, I mean, Matt knows how much I loved recording Scratch and I what? did it. <laughs> um, so like, because I'm not really... Uh, because like I mean I really enjoy uh, creating the story and like I like people seeing what has been made but that's probably why when I got into directing like I really enjoyed that because I didn't have I could like I was more involved in like the animatic making process which meant I didn't have to pitch anymore other than the recording <laughs> scratch that was the only part <laughs> that it was still kind of like that and and for um, for clarity scratch is when we don't have the yeah, actor I, so I, Roxanne has to go up to the mic and like pretend to be hop hop or pretend to be sprig or whatever and she she says she hates it but like I loved it she did a great <laughs> job it was really good temporary voices yeah yeah it was more of like the amount of psychic damage I had to take it <laughs> I heard myself uh so but but everyone else didn't I don't think anyone else had a problem with it I was the only one who took damage well it's like it's like when you hear yourself on the answering machine you're like that's not me <laughs> no it's like even I even showed my sister um <laughs> the parts where I recorded myself she's like that doesn't sound like you know it's like oh thank god <laughs> um, so Oh man, Joe. What about yeah, Joe? You have any thoughts about pitching? Uh, I, pitching? I I really enjoy pitching. Um, when you, when you, especially when you've and had you're time. You're great at it, Joe. Yeah, Joe <laughs> Joe's it. Joe's Joe really cares. excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Both the voices and everything. When you when you have time to prepare, it's always it's always really rewarding. It's kind of putting on a little performance. And Matt, Joe, and I, has, Joe has even queued up music. You know what I mean to play underneath uh, his pitch. Mm, that's next yeah, level we, stuff. We yeah we 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 would do that on Steven Universe a lot too. Um, I mean, also we would have. Uh, board artists who would write songs on guitars and sing and I would like this was like with Jeff Lou I would pitch his boards while he would 
um, play his guitar and sing wow. the song. That is so um, and, and on the computer, no, and, right? So and you're the same, tabbing through. Yeah, yeah. And the same That's same with awesome. Rebecca with Rebecca Sugar. She if, if she had a song for the for the episode we were working on, we would pitch it for her. Well, that's awesome she's saying it um so that's that's always that's always a lot of fun and matt and i come from like the when we were in school we were doing this all on paper mostly and we actually put it up on the wall and we oh, yeah. have to like with like a point, point at it with a stick and 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 get close and, and everyone has to look and gather around it was it was very fun that's tricky because like and even actually in Steven early days, you guys, we were still pinning it up actually at the yep. very early stages. Mm. And I remember because like you're in a small room, but you know, there's a lot of people in there and, and you can't always see the boards like because they're so small. <laughs> so you really relied on the pitcher to communicate the scene mm-hmm. almost verbally and with their body. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's good point. stuff though. <clears throat> so I think that may have been our last question. We have, um, you want to show another clip, Matt? Yes. Okay. So my friends, uh, we brought one more thing to share today and it is a rough cut of our season three trailer for you. So the thing I want to caveat it because it's not done. It's a rough cut, but one big shout out the music, which is an incredibly cool remix of no big deal was done by Jake Neutron, who I've always been a huge fan of, uh, amazing, musician and their team put together a really incredible remix for this trailer. We're going to play it now. The only other caveat I have to say is that internet's a little squiffy. It may skip here and there. Hope it doesn't. But other than that, please enjoy. And I can't wait for you guys to see season three when it airs, when it premieres on October 2nd. So thank you so much. Took a leaf through a box, up a weird to a swamp where frogs talk. Now I'm stuck, got no plans, just my luck, I'll do the best that I can. Making friends and enemies, it's weird, but hey, it's grown on me. I will not only rule over this world, but all worlds. <laughs> You'll never get away with this. I gave you this. I gave you everything. We're with you, Anne. Till the end. Me and crime will hold him. Just go. I just didn't want to be alone. No, it can't be. Polly, get the box. Get the box. Give him back. Give him back. I'm sorry for everything. It's no big deal. Fantastic. Yay. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we just have another minute. Um, anyone have any last minute thoughts or? Oh, I mean, we're just excited for everyone to see the rest. So <laughs> thanks for coming, everyone. Have a fun light box and have a great week. Enjoy your week, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you for joining bye. us. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>